Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel again, nice to see you. Today we're going to talk a little bit about this tank. This is my Celestial Pearl Daniel tank um, and long time viewers will know this as possibly one of my most problematic tanks. So this is currently in my office, this is where I work on a day to day basis, my computer and workstation and all that, just over here and this sits behind me and right here behind you is the brightest of bright windows. So I constantly have to battle algae issues with this tank and I've had everything from black beard algae requiring a total blackout uh, to green hair algae to all kinds of horrible yucky bubbly algae. So recently I've been trying my best to get this to look nice again and I think I finally got it looking nice but I'm still having to battle the algae issues. So I just thought I'd talk you through the tank. Um, I'll give you some of the hints and tips and mistakes that I've made along the way, see if you like any of it, if anybody can give me any ideas that would be great too. But I'm basically a wannabe aquascaper uh, and this is how far I've got so far. So I think one of the most important things that you can do when you are starting a new tank or trying to battle any algae issues is make sure that your parameters are pristine or as close to pristine as you can get and usually that means water changes. So, as you know, I'm a big fan of the HMA filter, which is a filter you can run off their tap water so you don't need to worry about the chlorinator. It takes all the nasties out and all that kind of stuff. So I have here the end of a hose, and this is a quick little tip. If you just put on some corner pieces here, you can just slot it on there and you don't have to worry about it flipping out and spraying water all over your really expensive computers. Which has happened. So I can just turn this on and forget about it and fill this back up. So I've done a bit of a water change, started filling it back up. I'm just going to top it up a little bit because I want this to be right up to the top so it looks quite good. So the reason I like this is you can just basically move this around. So if I don't want it to disturb the substrate too much, I can just put it at an angle, point it at the back wall, and then it kind of diffuses the flow a little bit so you don't have to worry about it. And then it's just a case of turning the tap back on. Dead easy, dead simple. You don't have to worry about any dechlorinator or anything like that. And just fill your tank back up as long as it's not going to change the water temperature too much. Now although this is a tropical tank it doesn't run really hot and this room runs hot anyway so it usually doesn't make too much of a difference to the temperature it might go up maybe a might go down maybe a degree at most. So right now the tank looks pretty good that's probably because I only set it up this way about three weeks ago um, well not even that maybe two weeks ago so everything's still fairly fresh. If there is going to be an algae outbreak, it's not had a chance to get hold yet. But let's talk a little bit about the tank, the tank itself. That's a two foot tank. It's a fluval, no it's not, it's a dual tank. Um, I actually inherited this from one of my neighbors. So if you're watching, thank you very much. Hope you like what I've done with it. Um, so yeah, it's two foot by 18 inches by 12 inches, something like that. At the moment I have a hang on back filter or a hang on side filter. This is a UV filter which I thought would give me a bit of a hand with some of the algae issues, but it hasn't really. But still, a good enough filter. Um, it's from All Pond Solutions, all the hardware that I talk about here, I'll put links in the description. But you can turn it up and down. I've got it quite low flow rate at the moment because I want to give the carpeting plants a chance to get hold before I turn the flow up. Um, so I've got the filter, I've got a heater behind there, and I've also got a bell for the CO2. So for CO2 I'm actually using this, it's just a, a can of air. I did have a pressurised CO2 as well but it ran out and I couldn't get to the place where I normally buy it from due to all the Covid restrictions So or this off Amazon uh, and it works pretty well. So every day, just about half an hour before the lights come on, I will top up the CO2 bell which you can see in there just, in fact if I top it back up again you can see it going down there and the bubbles coming out. That's an ISTA CO2 kit, uh, obviously with a replacement bottle. But that works really well and I do get some perling. I get to see some perling going on with the plants. Um, I think that looks pretty good. You'll notice here there's a bit of algae on the sides. Uh, there's a little bit on the back as well. 
but this is actually vastly reduced from what it was. So I think measures I'm taking now are actually making quite a big difference. Uh, so in terms of the tank and the look in general, these lights are actually from Wish. I got these from Wish. They were cheap as chips and they've been absolutely fantastic. Um, they're probably too much light for the tank, but I'm going for a high light with CO2 and if I need to, I can dial back the light as well and take it down a step. Uh, the tank has got bogwood in it, uh, a few stones, some dragon rock stones in here. Um, I was going for a nice kind of central arch, so the wood pokes out in two locations to give a few swim throughs here, which the fish really seem to enjoy. They are chasing each other around all the time. Um, I've tried to create lots of hidey holes, lots of mossy areas and create sight line blocks and things like that so if the aggression gets too much the fish have always got a chance to escape. Um, outside the tank I've gone for a little plant pot here so these are just house plants there's a plant here which I think kind of accentuates is that the word I'm going for? Accentuates the look and um, I've gone for some good old typical regular moss stolen from a wall on a walk one day uh, on top of the wood and it's just touching the water level or just under the water level which then wicks it up throughout and keeps that looking nice and green and fresh and healthy. Um, I've taken this plant here and just put a cutting of it back there to see if that will root the same kind of way as you would do with pothos um, just to see how I got on with that. So far so good, it's not wilted or anything, it's been in there a couple of weeks, not seen any roots necessarily but might be starting them. And then this plant here at the back is also just a regular guard, some kind of fern, um, I forget which type. But what I've done there is kind of wedged it in between this bit of wood and the tank rim itself is just a terracotta pot filled with those little clay balls that you get from Ikea as a, um, like a plant substrate. And I've just put the plant itself in there, filled it with the clay balls and then that sits under the water line and again wicks up the water and keeps the plant looking really healthy. So that seems to be working and if you take a step back I quite like the overall look. Um, like I say the filter is pretty good in that it's sized appropriately for this tank and even much bigger but I can turn down how much I want to increase or decrease the flow with this. I can also do some surface skimming and um, that's got a bit of a surface skimmer in there as well. Um, so I'm happy with that. And then I think the next thing I had to do was plant. So I took myself off to pets at home a couple of weeks ago. I think I spent about 25 quid on plants because they had various offers going on. So I've got all these Rotala that you see in the back. Um, I've got some Java Firm that I've stolen from other plants. I've got some Vals that I've stolen from other tanks. Um, I've got these... Um, in fact, most of them are either bought from pets at home in their Tropica plant range or they are nicked from other tanks just to give a bit of a... I'm going for a messy jungle feel. These, the buse in here, in fact, if you look at the buse, the buse of Flandra, I always feel like I'm trying to cast a spell whenever I use Latin names. You can see a little bit of purling going on there, the oxen bubbles. Um, I really like this plant here as well. It looks a little bit like a, a lily, it reminds me of that. I've got another one back here. So I've just tried to load up on plants. Um, Elio Charis, I think this is called, the, the grass down here. That's already started to fill in massively. So I'm going to try and let this bit at the front all fill in and start to cut it back, obviously, and keep it in trim. But I'm thinking with algae control, big water changes, lots of plants, that's only going to help. I've also got a load of java moss here attached to the wood. Um, if you've seen the before, this java moss was just taking over the whole tank, so I really need to keep on top of this, but I do like the look it gives. And it supports the cherry shrimp. So this is one of the inhabitants of the tank. This is one of the cherry shrimp. As you can see, when we've got the macro lens on, there is actually still quite a bit of algae in there. Um, I've obviously manually taken out as much as I can, but still some there. These guys go to work on it for me. Some more of my helpers, there's the red ram's horn snails, they're going to work on the algae on the glass. Can't recommend these guys enough. These and uh, Malaysian trumpet snails for turning the substrate are really good. You just have to make sure you've got a plan to deal with them if they do 
have a, a population explosion, which is what tends to happen to the snails. So as clean up crew go, the shrimp and the snails, they do a pretty good job. They should certainly be able to handle a tank of this size. I think it's just mainly the sunlight coming in through the window next to it that's causing me the problems. So then on to the main attraction themselves. These are the Celestial Pearl Danios, or depending who you are and where you come from, you might call them Galaxy Rasboras. As far as I can tell, same fish, just different namings. I think they were classified as one thing and then as time went over someone else classified them separately as another and then the two have kind of hung around and no one's ever really made the decision over what they are but as far as I understand Celestial Pearl Danio is the one that most people go for although Galaxy Rasbora is a pretty cool name um, they are brilliant little fish, they're so colourful so I, I do get lots of questions about whether or not I use any kind of specific feeds or any specific water, I don't use RO water or anything like that, these are just how colourful they are um, if they're not that colourful there's a chance that they're either juvenile or female because they're a little bit duller um, but they're really fast, really skittish, they're all over the tank they're pretty good with other tank mates there is, as you can see, a bunch of cherry shrimp in there and they tend to leave them alone in terms of breeding, they're egg scatterers, so they will scatter their eggs, that's why I've got lots of moss and grass around there, because I want to give them the best chance they've got if they do get into breeding. Uh, I've got seven altogether. Um, it's really hard to sex, because most times when you buy them, you're buying juveniles, and you can't really tell with the juveniles whether you're getting males or females. So I've got four adult fish, which are definitely in breeding condition, because they are showing off to one another constantly. Um, I think all four of them are male, possibly one that might be a female, but I've added the extra three juveniles uh, in the hope that some of them get female. I might have to do some separating as we go on down the line, but hopefully we'll get something coming out of it. But in terms of just a nice interesting tank, I like the look of it. I don't know, what do you think? Um, usually when I, I do something like this, it lasts for a week, maybe two tops, but you can already see that it's going to fall apart and get loads of algae. So far, this seems to be good, and I think it's just a case of me keeping on top of it, keeping up with the water changes more than I would normally, making sure that I can keep that algae at bay, and keeping the plants healthy. Um, so, watch this space, as they say. As always, you can subscribe to the channel, make sure you follow along so you can see the updates as they come out. You can even join the channel now, and see a few extra updates in between videos. Um, but thank you very much for watching, I hope you found that interesting at least. I think it's one of the coolest tanks that I've got. Um, I think the fish themselves are so colourful that they're just brilliant um, and it makes my work life so much easier to having this just turn around and I can take my mind away from it for a few minutes. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much for watching. Please click that subscribe button. I'm going for 10,000 uh, subscribers this year. That's my goal. Um, I might just miss it, but you never know. Share it, click like, click subscribe, click comment, do whatever you want. Uh, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!